Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're going to return to Dr. Joseph Murphy. And we're going to visit a book we haven't really visited yet. That's the one he has on telepsychics. Really, he started to talk about how to communicate with your soul, which is really what he's talking about in all of his work as he focused on communicating with your subconscious mind. But there's some interesting stories and teachings in this book, particularly about black magic or white magic or how good and evil can affect you and curses and how they don't really work. It's an interesting discussion. It's important in understanding how you create your reality, how telepsychics can be your magic power for perfect living. Magic is referred to as the art of producing a desired effect or result through the use of various techniques. Men speak of the magic of music, the magic of spring, and the magic of beauty. It is also referred to as the art of causing illusions, such as in entertainment, by the use of sleight of hand, ligurta mane, and conjuring, whereby one pulls a rabbit out of a hat or causes a human being to disappear. The invisible power within you. To most people, magic is the production of effects by unknown forces. Magic, however, is a relative term. Obviously, if the processes are known to you, the work is not a work of magic to you. In many remote places in the world today, among primitive people, the airplane, radio, television, or recording machines would be considered magical objects. Likewise, these discoveries would have been looked upon as magical 150 or 200 years ago in our own country. We understand how astronauts manage to go to the moon today and do not, therefore call it magical. All forces are in their nature unknown. All things come forth from spirit. We do not see spirit, but we can feel the spirit of joy, the spirit of the game, the spirit of the musician, the spirit of the speaker, and the spirit of goodness, truth, and beauty, moving through our minds and hearts. No theologian has ever seen spirit or God, but we can use this presence and power in all phases of our lives. We don't know what electricity is, for instance. We only know about some of the things it does. The force itself is still unknown to us. Actually, all of us practice magic constantly. We desire to lift our finger and lo and behold, the invisible power responds according to the intention of our mind. Yet we do not know exactly how we move and lift our finger. Socrates informs us that just by lifting a finger, you disturb the most distant star. You will perceive that we are all familiar enough with the magic power within us, though it is not called by that name in our workaday world. Tuning in with the magic power. You can tune in to the infinite power within you and transform your whole life. Wherever I go, whether to Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, or the various cities in our own country, people tell me of the amazing untapped power which they have contacted and which has completely transformed their lives. Many of them have said that their old friends and acquaintances have remarked to them, what's happened to you? I hardly know you. As you follow the techniques and processes outlined, you will find that this inner power can solve your problems, prosper you, reveal hidden talents to you, and lift you up from sickness, failure, lack of limitation of all kinds. This power can guide you and open up new doors of expression for you. You can receive inspiration, guidance, and new creative ideas, bringing you harmony, happiness, and peace of mind. For a college student tuned in for passing examinations. A few months ago, I talked with a college student who was getting rather poor grades. He was quite despondent because his marks were, as he said, bad enough to cause him to flunk out. He had been reading and studying Secrets of the I Ching, and in asking it a question, it said, Go and see the great man. He interpreted that to mean that he should see a counselor or spiritual advisor, though it had deeper meanings also. I asked, Why do you want poor grades? Infinite intelligence is within your subconscious mind, and you can use it. Okay, he said. My parents criticize me and point out that my sister is a much better student than I am, and passes all her examinations easily. 
I explained to this young man that he should immediately cease comparing himself with his sister, because all comparisons are odious, pointing out that each person is unique and that everyone is born with different endowments. In comparing yourself with others, you are placing the other on a pedestal and denigrating yourself. Furthermore, you are giving too much attention to the activities and successes of your sister, neglecting your own studies while forgetting your inner capacities and abilities. To continue along this line will cause you to lose initiative and incentive, causing a buildup of inner attention and anxiety. The only competition is in your own mind between the thought of failure and the thought of success. You were born to win, to triumph, to succeed, and to overcome all problems. The infinite power can't fail, and you are one with it. At my suggestion, he followed a simple and very practical technique, which he went over mentally every night prior to retiring as follows. I sincerely wish for my sister and all other students in my classes success and accomplishment in all their studies. Infinite intelligence guides me in my studies and reveals to me everything I need to know. I know my subconscious mind has a perfect memory and reveals to me the answers on all my examinations. I pass all my examinations in divine order. I sleep in peace every night and I awake in joy. As he continued thinking and acting along the above lines, a few weeks ago he said to me, I'm competing with no one. I'm doing fine. I know now that I have what it takes. As Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, there is guidance for each of us. And by lowly listening, we shall hear the right word. How she practiced telepsychics. Tele means communication and psych means the soul or spirit within you. When you pray, you are contacting your psyche or higher self, and it responds according to your beliefs and recognition of it. A young nurse recently planned on taking a flight, but the night before the departure, she had a vivid experience. In a dream, she saw the plane hijacked. An inner voice spoke to her and said, cancel your trip. She awakened startled, but she followed the inner instruction and canceled the trip. Incidentally, the plane she had selected was hijacked. The guiding principle of her subconscious caused her to see the event before it happened in order to protect her. The plan to hijack the plane was already in universal subconscious mind, and as she prayed for guidance, she received the answer in a dream, which came from her deeper mind. Her prayer before retiring every night is as follows. Divine love goes before me wherever I go, making joyous, happy, and glorious my way. The sacred circle of God's eternal love surrounds me, and I am always watched over by God. I bear a charmed life. The above prayer is true telepsychics, or actual communication with the infinite intelligence of her subconscious mind, which knows all, sees all, and responds to the nature of her thought action and reaction are cosmic and universal in prayer you are having a dialogue with your higher self which some call god others use the term true self living spirit almighty the father within infinite intelligence the oversoul brahma allah etc there are many names for the power within you but in any case it is timeless spaceless ageless and nameless the bible calls it i am which means being life awareness, self-originating spirit, unconditioned consciousness. All you need to remember is that your thought causes the infinite power to respond. You are dealing with a reciprocal action and reaction. As you sow, you reap. And as you call, you receive an answer. He discovered the power of his mental image. Thoreau said years ago that we become what we image. The mental picture you hold in your mind tends to manifest itself in your experience. A sales manager who often attends my lectures at the Wilshire Ebel Theater on Sunday mornings told me how he draws on the power of his imagination, which he finds extraordinarily effective. Here it is. He relaxes and calms his mind by quietly repeating to himself the 23rd Psalm. Then he looks at the white wall in his office. As he focuses his attention on the blank white wall, he throws a picture of the sales figure he wants at the end of the year. He looks at the amount closely, focusing all his attention on the financial figures. Then he claims these figures are now sinking down into his subconscious mind. Finally, he hears the president of the company congratulating him on the wonderful growth of the organization and his splendid accomplishments. He said that he knew when the figures had reached his subconscious 
because the impression was always followed by a sense of great peace. This is truly telepsychics in action. His mental image was communicated to his psyche and was developed in the dark room of his mind, coming forth as the joy of the answered prayer. This sales manager said for the past four years, the financial sales figures for each of the years has always exceeded his mental image. This is true because your subconscious always magnifies whatever is impressed upon it. Give the right mental image to your subconscious. Every picture that you create in your mind, particularly when emotionalized, comes to pass. It works out in action, either internally or externally. If you inhibit it from working out in external action, it is inevitable that it will work out in internal action, in some mental, emotional, or physical disturbance of your body. Be careful that you do not indulge in mental images that you don't want to carry out in external actions. I once knew an alcoholic who was imprisoned for manslaughter. He said to me that he was absolutely determined to never imbibe again when he was discharged from prison the very day he was released. However, he immediately began to drink heavily. Why? The simple reason is because he always was forming mental pictures of a drink while he was in prison and the moment he got out he took to the bottle he externalized the act of that which he was picturing all the time if he had not externalized his mental image this picture would have hurt him in some other way probably in the form of physical or emotional upset thus every picture that you create in your mind has to be worked into action lest it manifest itself in some mental physical or emotional disharmony in the body how a writer discovered the magic power within him. A writer friend of mine told me that he had a misunderstanding with the producer of a play based on his script. They had a rather heated exchange. He had read Miracle of Mind Dynamics and had applied many of the techniques of prayer outlined therein. When he went home, he went into his den, relaxed, and thought about the infinite power within him. Then he conducted an imaginary conversation with the producer as if he were experiencing the future now. He pictured the producer right in front of him, claiming harmony, peace, and perfect understanding between them. In his vivid imagination, he conversed with the producer, saying that all he wanted was divine right action. He imagined the producer responding, saying, There is perfect agreement between us. Divine right action prevails. In this quiet, passive state, he envisioned a happy ending, feeling the imaginary handshake of the producer and the perfect harmonious solution. Several days passed, and the writer met the producer in the club to which they belonged. Before he had a chance to greet him, the producer called him over and said, I have reread your script, and I admit you are right. What is right action for one is right action for all concerned. What the writer had claimed to be true subjectively came to pass objectively, Try it. It works. There isn't a single human being in the country that cannot overcome fear, anger, and hostility and resolve his conflicts, sharpen his mind, and live an amazing life. We go about it by changing our attitudes like the above-mentioned writer. William James, the great American psychologist, said, Human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. Telepsychics is for all men and women. Inspiration or contact with the infinite power can come to you as easily as the air you breathe. You breathe casually and without effort. Likewise, we let the divine intelligence or creative essence of God into our minds or intellect without tension. Many people have erroneous ideas about inspiration. They believe it is an extraordinary experience given or had by mystics or other highly spiritual people. This is not so. Although it is true that people who lead spiritual lives may be inspired frequently or get spontaneous feelings or ideas, it is equally true that the businessman may also become inspired by turning to the infinite power within him. Inspiration or divine guidance may be had on any problem. In other words, the information you seek, knowledge required or business difficulties solved may be achieved simply by asking God or the infinite power for the answer. You may be a novelist and have several books to your credit, yet when you get a pad and a pencil or typewriter, you can't begin. Nothing happens. Not an idea, plot, or story. You may drink six cups of coffee and it does not help. Quiet your mind. 
however, and claim that you are inspired from on high and that God's creative ideas unfold within you in divine order. You will then receive knowledge, guidance, and creative energy. Ideas will flow to you freely, joyously, and lovingly. An engineer gets specific data. An engineer once told me he wanted specific data for an engineering examination. He realized that his professor had given him the information, but he had forgotten it. He asked his subconscious mind to furnish him with the answer and then went to work on other parts of the examination, and the answer welled up from his deeper mind. It was in his subconscious mind all the time, and when he relaxed and let go, the wisdom of his subconscious came freely into his conscious mind, and he passed his examination easily. Remember, the quiet mind receives the answer. The Cash Register Man Some years ago, I read a magazine article about the man who got the idea for the cash register. The article explained that although man had not had much of an education, he was very intelligent and perceptive. Once while on ocean voyage, he asked the ship's officer to explain to him the workings of the log, which registered the speed of the ship. The explanation was given, and suddenly the man got the idea for the cash register. This man was aware of a specific problem. Men are often wrongfully accused of stealing while others steal and never get caught. Also, when cash is exchanged, countless errors can be made in change. He immediately related the workings of the ship's log to a solution to this problem, and through this inspiration, he developed the cash register. This was inspiration, or telepsychics. Ask your subconscious to give you creative ideas, and a similar idea worth a fortune may well up within you. You can tune in with your higher self and receive answers by calming yourself and knowing that when you call, there will be a response in accordance with the nature of your call. Recall that the wire from the powerhouse is placed in your room or cellar. The main wire belongs to Edison. The wiring in the house belongs to you, and the contact is there enabling you to turn on the light. Similarly, your conscious mind can, at this moment, contact the infinite storehouse and wisdom within you. You would not pray unless you believed that there is a wisdom and intelligence in your subconscious which knows all and sees all and is responsive to your call. The Bible says, Before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Points to remember. 1. Telepsychics means communication with your psyche or soul, i.e. your subconscious mind, which is coextensive with all wisdom and all power. When you pray, believing your subconscious mind responds with the answer. 2. Magic is a relative term. To most people, magic is the production of effects by unknown forces. All forces are in their essence unknown. Scientists do not know what energy is. Edison, when asked by a woman what electricity was, replied, Madam, it is. Use it. There is an invisible wisdom, power, and intelligence in your subconscious mind, which knows all and sees all. You can contact this power with your conscious mind. This primal power is timeless, ageless, nameless, and eternal. 3. You can use your inner powers to solve your problems, prosper you along all lines, reveal your hidden talents, and set on the high road to happiness, peace of mind, and freedom. 4. Cease comparing yourself with others. This attitude consists in denigrating yourself while placing others on a pedestal. You are unique, different from every person in the world. Give attention to your inner powers, and you will excel in your chosen field. If you wish to pass an examination, don't compare yourself with other students. This attitude causes tension and anxiety. Relax. Quiet your mind. And every morning and night, affirm feelingly and knowingly, infinite intelligence in my subconscious mind guides me in all my studies, and I will pass all examinations in divine order. When you pray, you are actually contacting your higher self, which some call God or supreme intelligence. You get an answer according to your belief. Sometimes you may receive an answer in a dream that warns you not to take a certain trip. One young lady who prayed regularly for guidance, divine love and right action dreamed 24 hours in advance of the hijacking of the plane on which she had arranged to travel. As a result, she canceled the trip. The reason for this is simple. The plan of the hijacking was already known in the collective subconscious, and her own subconscious, which is one with the collective mind, revealed the plan to her. 6. The picture you have in your mind tends to manifest itself in your life. A sales manager focuses 
his attention on a certain financial figure for the end of the year. And by repetition and concentration, this mental picture enters his subconscious mind. In the past four years, his conscious has magnified and multiplied the desired result. The subconscious magnifies whatever you give attention to. Seven, an ex-alcoholic who pictures himself drinking will be compelled to drink. Any mental picture you emotionalize will come to pass in your experience. Imagine what is lovely and of good report. Eight, if you have a misunderstanding with another person, conduct an imaginary conversation with him based on the golden rule and the law of love. Realizing that there is harmony, peace, and divine understanding between you. Imagine and picture in your mind the happy ending by shaking your hands in harmony and peace. What you imagine and feel to be true subjectively will come to pass objectively. The Bible says, I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Many people today are afraid of malignant thought projections, black magic, evil eye voodoo, etc. There seems to be a general fear that there is some sort of hidden power that others can use to hurt them or to mar their happiness. The greatest secret within man, you will truly lead a full and happy life when you awaken to the greatest of all truths. It is expressed in Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, which means, hear, understand, O Israel, illumined, awakened man, the Lord, the Lordly power or supreme power, our God, our ruler, the infinite power, is one Lord, one power, not two, not three, not ten, not one thousand, just one. When we are very young and highly impressionable, our parents, who didn't know any better, told us about a punitive God and also about a devil who would tempt us. They also cautioned us that if we were very bad, we might go to hell and suffer forever. Children and childish minds think only in pictures or mental images, and not knowing anything better, they project images of God and a devil. Children envision God up in the heavens on a golden throne surrounded by angels and the devil down below in the flames of hell, not realizing that in fact all of us create our own heaven and our own hell by the ways in which we think, feel, and believe. Primitive man attributed pleasure to the gods and all pain, suffering and misery to evil spirits or to devils of his own creation. Prehistoric man realized that he was subjected to strange forces over which he seemed to have no control. Earthquakes and floods took place, and not knowing the cause, the jungle priests said the gods were angry. Then they proceeded to offer up sacrifices to appease the angry wrath of the supposed gods. The sun gave man heat, but in a prolonged drought, the same sun seemed to scorch the earth. Fire warmed man, but it also burned him. The thunder terrified him. Lightning paralyzed him with fear. The waters flooded his lands. At times, his cattle and children were drowned. His understanding of external powers consisted of primitive and fundamental beliefs in many types of gods. From this crude and ignorant reasoning, primitive man proceeded to supplicate the intelligences of the winds, the stars, and the waters, hoping they would hear him and answer his prayer. He proceeded to make offerings and sacrifices to the gods of the wind and the rain. Primitive man divided the gods and the genii into beneficial and malignant powers. Hence, you will find the universality of these two powers in all the creedal beliefs of the millions of people. A belief in two powers is a hangover from these old superstitious beliefs. Good and evil in your life are determined by your thought. The forces of nature are not evil. It depends upon how you use them. You can use any power in either of two ways. The same wind will blow a boat on the rocks or carry it safely to the harbor. You can use electricity to fry an egg or electrocute someone. You can use atomic energy constructively to drive a ship across the ocean or destroy cities, towns, and people. You can use water to drown a child or quench his thirst, fire to warm or burn him. We give purpose to the forces of nature. Good and evil are in the mind of the individual. They are nowhere else. Think good and good follows. Think evil and evil follows. Keep your eyes on the greatest thought and move ahead in life. Judge Thomas Troward, author of Edinburgh Lectures and many other books stated in 1902, once you admit there is any power outside yourself, 
however beneficial you may conceive it to be, you have sown the seed which must sooner or later bear the fruit of fear, which is the entire ruin of life, love, and liberty. You must contend earnestly both within ourselves and outwardly for the one great foundation and never now on to all eternity admit for a single instant any thought which is opposed to this, the basic truth of being. Troward has stated a marvelous truth which each person should keep before him. The suggestions of others have no power to create the things they suggest. The power is in your own thought. When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. It is always the movement of your own thought which creates. You have the power to completely reject any negative suggestion and unite mentally with the omnipotence within you. Why the so-called voodoo curse is merely a negative suggestion. Some years ago I visited Cape Town, South Africa to lecture for the late Dr. Hester Brandt, who had a large center there teaching the science of the mind. While I was there, she arranged for me to visit one of the gold mines in Johannesburg. An English physician affiliated with one of the mines I visited told me that when a man who is working in the mine violates company code, he gets a message from the voodoo doctor such as, you will die at 6 p.m. And he sits down and dies. Post-mortem examination show no reason for the deaths whatever, and the doctor added that fear generated by the violators themselves is the actual cause of death. She was terrified because they were praying against her. A few weeks ago, I talked to a young woman who was in great distress because she said there were some people in her former church praying against her because she had left their group. She believed she was cursed and that as a result, everything was going wrong. I explained to her that the curse she mentioned was really the negative use of the law of her subconscious mind within herself and that she was imposing the curses on herself through fear. The suggestions of others had become a movement of her own thoughts, and since her thoughts were creative, she was hurting herself. She was transferring the power within herself to members of her former church, not realizing they had no power. I explained to her that the power was within her and that she should immediately cease transmitting the power to others. God or spirit is one and indivisible. It moves as unity. There are no divisions or quarrels in it. And as she aligned herself with the infinite and gave it her allegiance, devotion, and loyalty, nothing would happen to her. She began to affirm, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Psalms 91.2 I added, look at those people as extremely ignorant and have compassion on them. The real and ultimate power is the great affirmative, which is constructive. They are using suggestion, which is a power, but not the power of God, which moves as harmony, beauty, love, and peace. Remember, a suggestion has no power unless you give it power. Join up consciously with the infinite love, life, and power within you, and constantly realize God's love surrounds me, unfolds me, and enwraps me. I bear a charmed life. The spell of God envelopes my whole being. Whenever I think of the church people, I will immediately affirm I loose you to God and let you go. Practicing the above simple truth, she was at peace, and she actually laughed at herself for giving her adversaries power. After about a week or so, she heard that five of these women became extremely ill and that one had passed on. This young woman no longer received their negative thoughts and vibrations, and their evil thoughts returned with double force to themselves. This is called the boomerang. She believed her father used black magic. Some months ago, I listened to the story of a woman in Honolulu who said that she had married outside her race and religion and that since her father was kahuna and had magical powers, he was determined through sorcery to break up her marriage. The explanation is oftentimes the cure. This woman was a graduate of the University of Hawaii and had majored in psychology, yet she lived in fear of her father's curse. I elaborated along these lines, explaining that if love united herself and her husband, no person or condition could break her marriage up. God is love, and when two hearts beat as one, all the excommunication and curses of the world would be as paper mache aimed at a British battleship. The susceptibility to impressions of our subconscious mind coupled with the negative use of our imagination has partially paralyzed millions of unknowing people. This woman was laboring under the delusion that her father's sorcery, negative use of mind, was potent and would succeed. 
I told her the story of Plotinus, who lived over 1700 years ago. An Egyptian priest visited Plotinus, one of the great Illumine men of his age. The priest imposed a curse on Plotinus. That is, he mentally concentrated on a death wish for Plotinus and aimed it mentally at him. Plotinus knew the trick and also knew that the foolish priest thought he had power. There is no power in a negative suggestion or a curse hurled at you by any or all the priests in the world unless you are foolish and ignorant enough to accept it. Plotinus sensed his oneness with the God of love. God is omnipotent. One with God is a majority. If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31 Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10.19 there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Psalm 91.10 I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Psalm 23.4 It is recorded that the curse recoiled, and finding no place in Plotinus, boomeranged on the Egyptian priest who had tried to impose it. He fell into a fit and collapsed at the feet of Plotinus. Plotinus had pity on the priest's ignorance and took him by the hand and raised him up. This priest recognized the one power and became a devoted disciple of Plotinus. This explanation took a great load off the mind of this Hawaiian woman. She said to her father, Dad, I am no longer afraid of you. You are to be pitied. You think you have power, but all you are using are negative suggestions. And what you suggest or wish for another, you are creating in your own experience. The power is within me. And I know my oneness with God. His love surrounds us and watches over us. Whenever I think of you, I affirm God is for me. No one can be against me. I am free. She blessed her father, loosed him, and let him go. Shortly afterwards, she wrote me saying that her father continued to hate her, and her husband had written her that his sorcery or black magic would destroy both of them. She paid no attention to his threats. In a few weeks, he dropped dead on the street. She said that her father had killed himself with hatred, and she was right. Hatred, jealousy, and hostility kill love, peace, harmony, joy, vitality, and goodwill. All his negative, destructive thoughts recoiled on himself, and the double blow proved too much fear for him. Whatever you wish for another, you create and manifest in your own body and experience. Moses and the Egyptian Priests In ancient times, the multitude believed that their priests had the power to curse those who displeased or irritated them, and the priests of that day took advantage of the ignorance of the people. Moses saw through the chicanery and deceit of the Egyptian priests. They were completely dumbfounded by him, and their fear of him caused the priests to abandon their attempts at intimidating Moses and his people. Moses taught the oneness of the spiritual power. The belief and faith of the Egyptians was built on a belief in many powers, Moses knew that God was one. His awareness scattered all negative ideas to the winds. Become a straight-line thinker. It is absolutely necessary that you get this straight, that harmony, beauty, love, peace, joy, and all the blessings of life come from the one source. God cannot do anything unloving, for God is boundless love. God cannot wish pain, for God is absolute peace. God cannot wish sorrow, for God is absolute joy. God cannot wish death, for God is life, and that is your life now. All so-called curses, sorcery, black magic, Satanisms, etc. come from the frightfully ignorant belief in a suppositional opposite force. There is only one power, one God, not two, three or a thousand, just one. To believe in an evil power to challenge God is based entirely on a rank superstition. When men use the one power, constructively, harmoniously, peacefully, and joyously, they call it God. When men use the power ignorantly, negatively, and foolishly, they call it Satan, devil, evil, spirit, etc. Curses return home to roost. When you turn to the living Spirit Almighty within you, and open your mind and heart, and daily affirm God is, and His presence flows through me as harmony, beauty, love, peace, joy, and abundance, God watches over me, and I am always surrounded by the sacred circle of God's love. And when you give complete allegiance, loyalty, and confidence to the one power within, you are called Israel in the Bible. The Bible says, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. 
Numbers 23.23. A man who recognizes the supremacy of the Spirit and the power of his own thought will find that all his ways are pleasantness and all his paths are peace. So to conclude this second section, there's some points to remember. And first of all, the greatest secret of the ages is the realization that God is one and indivisible, the only presence and power, cause and substance. The enlightenment of man gives all power, allegiance, and loyalty to the supreme cause, spirit, and not to created things. You give no power to any man, stick, stone, condition, sun, moon, or stars. You give power only to the creator. Secondly, when we were children, we thought in images and mental pictures. Consequently, the childish mind projected images of God as an old man with a beard sitting on a throne and angels with harps playing music. Childish minds pictured a devil with hoofs and horns and a tail that could sting, all of which were thought images created in our own minds based on the superstitious suggestions of adults. Thirdly, a primitive man attributed pleasure to the gods and pain and suffering to evil powers. He supplicated the intelligences of the winds, the stars, and the waters, hoping they would hear him and answer. A belief in two powers, good and evil, is a throwback to those age-old superstitious beliefs. Four, the forces of nature are not evil. It depends upon how you use them. You can use electricity to vacuum the floor or electrocute someone. Good and evil are in man's motivation, in his thought life. Five, once you admit that there is any power outside yourself, However beneficial, you may conceive it to be you have sown the seed, which must sooner or later bear the fruit of fear, which is the entire ruin of life, love and liberty. Six, the voodoo or witch doctor has no power, but when he wishes to impose a curse or a death prayer on an unsophisticated native, he lets the native know that he is cursed, and he, believing in this power, succumbs to the suggestion, which becomes a movement of his own thought. These same curses imposed on missionaries are ridiculed by them, for they realize that evil curses have no power. There is nothing in their subconscious that accepts the negative suggestions of the witch doctor. There must be a kindred spirit or feeling in your subconscious mind before you can accept evil suggestions. How far would you get suggesting failure to a man who is full of confidence and faith in success? He would laugh at you. Seven, it is foolish to give power to others when they tell you they are praying against you. The best procedure is to laugh at them, for they have none of the power that they think they have. The power is of God, and it is the great affirmative. It is the all-wise one, the mighty God, the father of all. It moves as harmony, and nothing can oppose it, thwart it, or vitiate it. It is the omnipotent. Join up with it, and when your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. The negative thoughts of others have no power to reach you if you refuse to accept them, and they will return to their point of origin with double force. 8. When God's love unites the wife and the husband, no person can break it up. God is love. And when someone says that he is going to break up a marriage, bless him and walk on. Give power to God and no one else. 9. Hatred, resentment, and jealousy and hostility kill love. Peace, harmony, beauty, joy, and discernment. To continue generating negative emotions is highly destructive and can end in fatal disease, acute mental aberrations, or insanity. 10. Moses taught the oneness of the spiritual power. The Egyptian priests believed in many gods and evil powers. Moses knew the power was one and scattered their negative thoughts like chaff in the wind. And 11. Become a straight-line thinker and give all power recognition and loyalty to the one supreme power, the living Spirit Almighty within you. Align yourself with it and let this presence flow through you as harmony, health, peace, joy, and love. And you will find that all your ways are pleasantness and all your paths are peace. So I hope this teaching finds you well. If you have been cursed or you felt like somebody gave you the evil eye or somebody was the cause of some curse, the other day I saw on TV a preacher saying, all people who voted for so-and-so are cursed now until the seventh generation. And I was just surprised because I knew people would take that and believe it. So you are never cursed. You are God. You are all powerful and you're using this power when someone gives you a curse and you believe it. So don't. 
this can be the power that gives you perfect living. It can help you with your examinations. If you have a student examination, we have a clear example here. And it can be used to create new things like it was used to create the cash register. This power is within you at all times. It is communicating with your soul power. Don't let voodoo or curses distract you from it. Use this power to create the reality that you want and it will work wonders for you. So let me know in the comments if you have ever been cursed or somebody was praying against you and how you responded. And remember this teaching because once you send it back with love, it will boomerang. So I would not be the one cursing and I would not be the one accepting the curses. I'd love to get your ideas of this and further how you communicate with your soul and many of the things that are discussed in this episode. It's always fun to examine the teachings of Joseph Murphy because they're so pure and perfect and powerful. They appeal to me on so many levels and, and it's so much fun to read his words. So we will always be returning to Dr. Joseph Murphy at some point in time because my subconscious is asking me to. In any case, I'm sending love to everyone listening and I'm cursing you with love if that's what you want. I'm giving you the love that you have within and allowing you to express it for you are love. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. <laughs>